Pwede mong bagitin okay. para malaman ng lahat ng ating OSWs, lahat ng mga kamag-anak nila. Before we start the discussion, I would like to make an opening statement. Good morning everyone again. Allow me to thank you for joining us today on this first organizational meeting of the Committee on Migrant Workers. Roughly two weeks ago, the Senate created this committee separate and distinct from the existing Committee on Labor as we recognize the need to legislate and to put forward policies that will cater especially to the concerns and issues of our modern-day heroes we call our OFWs. I'm deeply honored and grateful for the trust given to me by my esteemed colleagues for electing me as the chairman of this new committee. As I have emphasized during my maiden privileged speech on August 17, 2022, it shall be my noble and wholehearted commitment to ensure that the spirit and the letter of Republic Act 11641, the act creating the Department of Migrant Workers, and all other laws governing the plight of our migrant workers shall be given true breadth and meaning. That being said, a primary goal of this committee is to ensure that the implementing rules and procedures or regulations of Republic Act 11641 shall uphold and protect the rights of our Filipino migrant workers in all stages of employment, recruitment, placement, deployment, deployment, and up until termination and or repatriation. Most importantly, affordable to our migrant workers. We shall also work hand in hand to ensure the safety and security of our workers by establishing an effective monitoring system by the migrant workers office in different countries. It is also imperative to run after illegal recruiters and abusive agents by adopting laws that will make the prosecutorial or prosecutorial the swifter. This committee shall also endeavor to safeguard and supervise the proper management and disbursement of the action fund such that legal and other financial aid are given to those OFWs in need. Further, this committee will make sure that the government's full cycle reintegration program as mandated by the law or the media will be truly and completely implemented. Finally, it shall be the duty of this committee to recommend and initiate the execution of bilateral agreements with other countries where our OFWs are deployed and where such agreements are still lacking and to review previous or existing agreements which may no longer be compliant with pertinent international labor standards. I cannot overemphasize how daunting the challenge we face and how important the task at hand is. This is just the beginning. However, I'm confident that with my years of ex personal experience helping our Kababayans to work with the willingness of all stakeholders to cooperate and take part in improving the lives of our FWs and the competence of the newly created Department of Migrant Workers and its attached agencies shall realize these goals. Hindi kaya't ko po kayong lahat na sana tayo ay magkaisa at isa sa liuning gandahin kung narin at gawing tunay na makabuluhan ang bawat buhay ng isang OFW ang mga bayani natin sa bagong panahon. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Okay, I would like to recognize the presence of Senator Bongo by Hybrid. May I ask my fellow Senators present if anyone would also like to make some introductory remarks? Okay, uh, Senator Bato de Rosa is being acknowledged. Thank Senator. you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, uh, Senator Robin Padilla, uh, Secretary Tosopli, Yusik uh, Alunis, Yusik Kakda, at saka Administrator Arnel Ignacio. Uh, before anything else, I would like to commend the good chairperson of the Committee on Migrant Workers for uh, stepping up to the challenge of heading this committee. The Department of Migrant Workers, or a DNW, that is only a few months old. Noong Pebrero ng 2022 lamang nagsimula, nagsimulan ang pag-implement nito. This is one of the landmark legislations that the 18th Congress is proudest to give birth to. Given this, we know that our task here in the Senate is to ensure that we usher in, that we usher in the careful implementation of Republic Act Number no. 11641, which establishes the DNW. This committee could not have landed in better hands, in the hands of someone whose track record of protecting the rights of our migrant workers since him. As an author of the Department of Migrant Workers Act, I look forward 
to the improvements and innovations that will be set up to protect and help our OFWs. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Mr. De La Rosa. Is there anybody else who would like to make an uh, introductory remarks? Okay, go ahead, uh, Senator Binatali, Senator um, Robin Hood Padilla, sir. Uh, maraming salamat po, uh, mahal na taga-pangulo. At uh, isang uh, mapayapang umaga po sa inyo at kay uh, Senator Idol uh, uh, Ronald Bato de la Rosa at kay Senator Bongo at sa lahat po ng namumuno ng uh, ating uh, uh, kagawaran ng uh, ating mga bayan ng OFW. Ako po ay uh, sinusundan ko po ang uh, sinabi ni Senator de la Rosa na isa pong karangalan na ang isang katulad po ng ating mahal na taga-pangulo Uh, Rapi Tulpo ang namumuno po dito sa bagong tatag na departamento sapagkat uh, siya po ay talagang uh, kilala na nakikipaglaban at uh, ipinaglalaban ang karapatan po ng ating mga bayaning uh, OFW. Alam niyo po, eh, isa pong malaking uh, pagpapala sa amin na sa amin pong uh, uh, pagkapanalo at kami po ay nasa Senado ngayon ay eh, na-exacto po na ito'y naitatag itong uh, Department of Migrant Workers sapagkat alam naman po natin na ekonomiya, kapag sa usapin na ekonomiya, iyaan po ang migrant workers natin. Katulad po ng uh, lumpati ng ating mahal na taga-pangulo, inilagay po na doon na halos 35 billion pesos, uh, dollars ang ipinapasok ng uh, ating mga migrant workers. Na ito po talaga sa usapang uh, totohanan, eh, sila po ang ating uh, export, yung ating mga migrant workers, yung kanilang skills. Kaya kung meron po dapat na binibigyan ng proteksyon ay yung ating migrant workers. Uh, sa panintulot po ng ating taga-pangulo, uh, Sir, Sir Rapi Tulfo, ibibigay ko lamang po itong regalo ko dito sa aking uh, kumpare na si Arnold Ignacio. Sapagat hindi pa po ito umuwi. Yung suot po niya, yan pa po yung suot niya kahapon. Ah, ganun po ba? Kaya irigalo ko lamang po ito. Sa last po ng record na binibigyan ng regalo ni Sir Robin Padilla, si uh, Mr. Arnold Ignacio, Administrator ng OWA. Okay. Toto para nakala ko kanina, nagbibiro lang. Talagang, hindi para bitwis, hindi pa umuwi. Aran, salamat po, Chairman. Oh, well, salamat kay Mr. Ignacio. Talagang how it shows how dedicated he is to his job, his new position. We appreciate that. Maraming salamat again. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Bato de la Rosa, and uh, maraming salamat, Senator uh, Robin Padilla. For the information of everyone as part of our agenda, the presentations from the Department of Migrant Workers and OWA. To have an orderly discussion with the indulgence of my fellow senators, We will first allow the presentations from DMW and OWA to finish before members of the committee can ask questions. Each presenter shall be given at least 10 minutes, of course, for the ex official members and the Senate President present. One to Sawa, sky's the limit. Now I know. <laughs> and for questions, and the other members, maximum 10 minutes on the clock. Let us now start with the Department of Migrant Workers. Ma'am? Meron pong tatlong requirements ang batas na inyong binuo para ma-considera uh, na fully constituted ang Department of Migrant Workers. Una po dyan, dapat meron na publish na implementing rules and regulations. Check na po yun, nagawa na po yun nung panahon po ni Secretary Mamao at uh, nung panahon po ng administration ni Tatay Digong Duterte. Yung pangalawa po, staffing pattern, na-submit na rin po yan, na-approve na rin po ng DBM, so check na rin po yan. Yung natitira na lang po ay yung pangatlo, at ito po yung uh, kailangan talaga ng tulong ninyo uh, dito sa Senado at sa Kongreso po. Ito po yung pag-approve ng kauna-unahang budget ng DMW. So yun po yung coming soon. Uh, meron na po akong konting katanungan. Uh, pero before that, I would like to put on record uh, na in the past, pag may mga reklamo ako natatanggap po na sa mga FW, uh, nandiyan palagi si uh, uh, Mr. Hans Kakdak, Atty. Kakdak, and of course, Mr. Anel Ignacio. Yung sa staffing po, um, sino-sino ba itong mga tao ngayon sa DMW, especially the people that would manning the uh, uh, rescue center, is that what you call it, yung sa telephone lines, sa crisis uh, line, if you, if you will. Uh, I think that's 24-7. Who are these people? And what are their qualifications? Are they recycled? Or are they new people that were trained to handle uh, phone calls from distressed OFWs? The Yusek uh, Hans Kakdak, who is in charge po of the One Repat Command Center to okay. respond, sir. Meron tayo no less than 
na katao, case officers po ang tawag natin na nagmamalan sa kanila. Bukod dito, merong encoders kasi hiwalay po ang trabaho ng nang sumasagot sa telepono, kumakausap sa OFW at pamilya, doon sa nag encode doon sa ating database. Ang key, ang isang key po dito yung ating e-cares database ng DMW OWA, kung saan doon po pumapasok lahat ng kaso na, na matatanaw po sa all the posts abroad. Question ko really is, who are these people, yung sinasabi mga encoder, uh, case officers, what are their qualifications? Ang ibig ko sabihin, sila ho ba ay mga trained yes. people na para mag-handle ng mga uh, awag mula sa mga OFWs natin in crisis yung mga OFWs natin nagkakaproblema yung mga OFWs natin na hindi na alam kung anong gagawin dahil sila po inabuso so what I mean is, meron ba silang background sa uh, pagiging isang social worker pagiging isang psychologist what I mean also is this should have empathy dapat naintindihan nila yung mga OFWs nagkakaroon silang pasensya kasi more often than not, yung reklamo na tatanggap ko sa mga OFWs kung place na pinatakbuhan ako pumupunta sa akin is walang pasensya sa halit na makinig lang because sometimes our OFWs needs uh, somebody to listen and to uh, sympathize with them. Yun may ibig sabihin. So dapat kung watay ng mga tao na nakakaintindi, malawak yung pasensya, malawak yung experience sa social work. So the short answer then is yes po, kwalipika. we ensure na kwalipikado po yung sinasalang natin case officers. Kaya ito, nagahanon na ako, tawagan niyo ito anytime. Dahil pagka, you know, in fact, when the percentage of our calls went down to 80%, which is still acceptable, mm -hmm. nang gulo na ako, nang gulo na ako doon, pinuntahan ko sila unannounced. So ngayon, uh, we are very proud of this uh, 1348 hotline. And then, as I've said, uh, but wait, there's more. Meron pa kaming OWA Kabayan Helpline. Ito, Sen, yung para doon sa medyo uh, ang isip, eh, medyo natakmaan na dahil sa lungkot, sa gutom. Ito po, may tatlo po tayong numero rito, uh, 091507. Bibigay ko na lang po sa inyo. Uh, baka kasi lahat ay magsitawagan. Iaabot ko na lang po sa inyo to Ito exclusively para doon naman sa talagang gusto meron ng nalulungkot lang. Wala siyang problema or anything under the sun. They want to talk to somebody? Ito po. But we assure you, ito pong inyo agam-agam, katama niyo po kaming lahat. Yung bagsik niyo po ay tatapat namin yan. Tatapatan namin yan. Hindi ho namin kakamping kakamping niyo kami dito. Alam niyo naman pagka tayo na sa programa niyo pag galit kayo, galit din ako. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ignacio. However, meron lang po akong idadagdan ang sinasabi niyo na yung numero ibibigay niyo sa akin baka malaman ng marami. Yun talaga ang purpose. Pag meron tayong hotline, dapat malaman ng lahat. Baka pwede mong bangitin okay. para malaman ng lahat na ating OSWs, lahat ng mga kamag-anak nila. Pwede nalang tawagan. Okay. 63-915-079-5005. You can also call the 63-969-169-0068. Pinagandang yes. process mo. Sige, go ahead. Plus 63-966-473-9543. Yan po ang ating OWA Kabayan Helpline. Okay. Mm -hmm.